Welcome to Prime for Battle. My name's Tim, I'm your host, and today we're going to be painting a Tyranid Termagant from the Leviathan box set. In a colour scheme of my own uh, creation, uh, after High Fleet Pterodon. Started with a Wraithbone Spray Prime. And then the first paint we're going to be using is actually Caraberg Crimson Shade. And we'll be applying this fairly liberally over the entirety of the skin of the termagant. So the arms, the underbelly, uh, the legs, anything avoiding the carapace. Uh, and we don't want it to pull too much, but we're also using some of the pooling effect to give us that uh, shadowy shade look uh, to um, really sort of make the, give the skin some interesting tone. So just apply that over the entirety of the, the body, including the tail. And you want to make sure that when you are applying it to the, uh, the skin, you don't want to get too much staining on any flat areas. So just uh, draw that out and avoid any sort of pooling on a flat surface like the tail. Predominantly with the term again, it's going to be the tail area where it's going to be noticeable the most. So just uh, if you do get some pooling, just wash your brush off and uh, draw out that, uh, that pooling on the tail a bit just so that it gives it a nice smooth finish. Now that we've done the Caraberg Crimson Wash all over the body, we're going to move on to the carapace. And for that, we're going to be using Pterodon Turquoise Contrast. Uh, this is where the, the name for the High Fleet has uh, come from. Pterodon Turquoise is one of my favourite contrast paints. I love the, the look and the effect that you can get using uh, Pterodon Turquoise. So I've put that into effect here on uh, my High Fleet. So you want to uh, apply this on all of the carapace. So... That's on the sort of upper thighs, uh, on the top of the head, all on the back, uh, and also on the top of the gun. And we'll also be applying it onto the hooves, so that will get uh, some additional work done to it later. And you want to make sure that you are allowing it to pull enough that um, it's giving you a sort of streaky, shadowy effect. We're using the pooling here so that the areas that don't have the pooling give you a highlighting sort of effect and it sort of does a lot of the work for us. So, um, yeah, really love how this comes out. You don't want to apply it too thickly, uh, but you don't want it thin that it's just giving you a smooth surface. So um, practice a little bit with it, uh, but um, you can, as you can sort of see, I'm, I'm applying it fairly thick, similar in way to the, uh, the Caribou Crimson. Okay, next we're going to be using Sigvold Burgundy Contrast. Uh, we use this for the gun. Uh, it keeps it in that pinkish theme of the, of the skin, but uh, separates it somewhat from the skin itself uh, so that it is distinct and on its own. So we're going to use this for the gun itself and the 
the tubing coming off the back of the gun, but avoid uh, the, uh, not sure what you'd call it, the, the little fleshy areas in the gun that we've already colored in with the uh, Karaberg. And also there's a energy cell kind of area, circular area there that we're going to do in another color shortly. So, um, and the and the little uh, claws that come off the bottom and front of the gun as well. You want to leave those and uh, just apply the burgundy over the rest. Then we're going to be using Magma Droth Flame Contrast. This is one of the paints from the newer uh, range of contrast paints. It's a sig single pigment paint, uh, so very strong color. Uh, really great bright orange color. And we're going to be using that for the claws. So that's the, uh, the claws on his forelimbs uh, and off the back of his legs. And then also uh, there is the claws on the gun, um, as well as that energy pouch, uh, for lack of a, a better term. Then for a quick step, we're going to use Imperial Fist Contrast, uh, which is again, part of the new contrast range. It's a single pigment yellow, quite a bright, vibrant yellow. And we're gonna be using this for the eyes on the termagant. So uh, you want to keep it fairly thin on your brush. Um, make sure if you have accidentally gone over the eyes with the Karaberg, you just uh, give that a quick touch with with a white or wraith bone, and then apply the yellow over the eyes, which will give it a nice uh, sort of yellow glow look uh, and uh, help those eyes pop out. And from here, you could leave the model if you wanted to. Um, it have essentially all its basic colors in and would uh, look pretty decent on the tabletop, but we're gonna take it an extra step further and we're gonna use some Rakar Flesh just to highlight some of the raised areas on the, the previously Karaberg Crimson fleshy areas. So what you're looking for is, I guess, the top of the shoulders, um, some of the, the raised muscles, any areas where the bone is pressing against the skin, um, the knuckles, uh, the sort of really bulbousy areas of the, the head, um, along the ridges of the tail, uh, all that sort of areas, uh, the ribs, uh, and it just gives it that um, extra little bit of color and texture and, uh, and will help it really stand out on the table. And it's not a, a long step. You don't have to go too um, accurate or detailed with it. It's fairly, fairly quick, just a few lines and uh, dabs here and there across the model. Um, and it will really help bring out those uh, 
those ridges and, and bones and whatnot. Then we're going to grab some wraith bone and just quickly paint the teeth of the termagant. Very quick step. Just uh, get a fine tip on your brush. Make sure that uh, you're using fairly thin coats and just carefully paint those teeth in. Don't stress too much. If you get a little bit on the flesh, uh, you can just go back over that with a little bit of caribou crimson. Uh, and if you're finding that you have uh, difficulty keeping your hands steady, find it best to keep your elbows um, or parts of your arm anchored on the table or something similar uh, will come a long way to helping keep your hands steady. So... That'd be the best tip, I think, for uh, keeping, keeping steady hands. Now we're going to go back and apply some additional detail to the claws, the magma droth flame areas. We're going to use some Lugnath orange, which is a very bright um, orange. And we're going to use that just on some of the corners and edges of those orange areas. Um, I find it helps to use the side of the brush. Uh, if you just uh, apply a little bit to your brush and just use the side of it and drag it along that sharp edge and it will help, uh, help you get a nice straight line. And uh, just, yeah, apply a couple of little bits over some of the ridges. Just what you feel helps uh, helps stand that uh, orange out a little bit, gives it a little bit of a edge, and uh, we'll also come back and apply some additional color to that orange to help blend that in later. Uh, make sure you also get the spikes on the front of the gun, and also just a little line on the energy pouch on the gun as well, um, just to. Uh, give it a little bit of interest. Now we're going back to the hooves of the termagant uh, and you want to use black templar here. We're just going to go over the entirety of the hooves with black templar. Black templar is an interesting black in that it's uh, a little bit uh, transparent. So what it'll give us is a slight hint of that pterodon turquoise under the black just on the edges and uh, some of the raised areas, and uh, yeah, it's an interesting look. So I use uh, Black Templar for when I don't want it to be really black, which I, you know, for that I would use uh, the other contrast black paint, which is, uh, the name's escaping me at the moment, Black Legion. So, yeah. Final few steps now, uh, we're going to be using some Druchi Violet, which is a purple shade. And we're going to be using that in the joints of the skin uh, and some of the shadowy areas. So in those areas around the uh, elbows and knees, etc., uh, the little vent kind of things on the, the model, 
and uh, around some of the areas where the uh, skin meets the uh, carapace as well. It just gives it, again, a bit of shading, some variation to the skin. Uh, I, help it, I think it really helps sort of make the, the model pop. And the final step, we're going to be using Yugen Orange Shade. Just on the areas we've previously done with the oranges. And this will help bring those colours together a bit, so that the uh, the Luganoth isn't as obviously stand out. Um, it'll uh, blend them together somewhat, and uh, provide a bit of extra shading in the recesses as well. So... And there you have it, our finished Tyranid Termagant in High Fleet Pterodon colours. Uh, apply uh, uh, whatever sort of basing that you're doing. Uh, for mine, I'm just using a texture paint with a black and grey finish with some grass. And uh, But do it however will uh, we'll match your army. And I might look at doing some basing videos later on on some of the different options that I really like. Yeah, I think this model comes out quite well. It doesn't take too long. You can batch paint this process quite effectively. And we end up with quite a striking looking uh, Tyranid Termagant. So thanks for watching. Uh, any feedback, please put it in the comments. Uh, anything that you would like to see me paint in the future, uh, put that in the comments as well. I'm always looking for new projects and things that I will enjoy to paint. Uh, and I like to, I'd like to try and get to things that maybe you don't see getting painted so much um, online. Really beginner focus. So if you're really having some challenges with some painting, feel free to reach out. Always happy to give some tips. Uh, really appreciate if you could uh, like the video subscribe to the channel would be awesome. Check out my Instagram where I've got a bunch of stuff that I've painted on there. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.